I won this MP3 radio at eBay a couple years ago. Got it really cheap. The radio comes in colorful retail box. One of the sides has the device specifications printed out. Let's get a closer look. The front has stereo speakers and LCD display. The cabinet is made of MDF, which is basically compressed paper, covered with film. The film is dark brown and has bubbles on the edges as it wasn't applied with enough care. Anyway, such wooden box is much better acoustically than a plastic case. The upper side has the controls, which somewhat resemble an iPod, but these are not touch sensitive, of course. Also, here are USB port and SD card slot, and a retractable antenna. This is how the device looks with the antenna fully extended. The back has the line-in connector. Unfortunately, the device doesn't have a line out or a phone out. The power slider and the 5 volt DC in connector. The radio is bundled with this strange power cable. It has a USB plug on one side and a round one on the other. The problem is the round connector is too long and doesn't allow to put the device close to a wall. However, the power switch in the back doesn't allow to do that either, but we'll return to this a bit later. A power adapter is not included, but you may use any USB wall charger, like from a smartphone or a tablet. You may also charge the device from a PC or laptop USB port, which brings the question once again. Why did they use this strange cable, while a standard mini USB cable will be far more logical? Anyway, the device also has an infrared remote, which is called Mini Acoustics, powered by a 3 volt coin battery. The digit buttons do nothing, but on the whole, the remote completely doubles all the controls on the device itself, which is a good thing. However, there is a catch. If you turn off the device by pressing the power button on the remote, it will say goodbye, and that's it. There is no way you can turn it back on from the remote. You have to flip the power switch on the radio off, and then back on. By the way, turning off like this is the only way to force the device to store the saved radio station, so it would remember them after the power is back on. So, power on. And immediately, we see that the radio has contrast problems. They should give more contrast or reduce the brightness. That's why you probably won't see the LCD clear enough on the video, but that's not my fault. The main menu offers to set up the clock, the backlight timeout, and choose the language from quite an impressive list. It lacks Russian though. Here you also can specify a time to turn off in 10, 30 or 60 minutes. Set up alarm clock and select the radio station for the alarm sound. It also specifies the firmware version, however, I don't know where you can get updates. The first function I would like to show is the active speaker function. Connect the phone, player or computer to the line in, and the device immediately starts to amplify the sound. On one hand, it is convenient, since the device turns this mode on as soon as you plug in a cable. On the other hand, it's not so convenient, since you have to unplug the cable to use other functions like the FM radio or built-in player. To adjust volume, you have to press one button and then use another two buttons to adjust the slider left to right. Not very convenient. The next mode, FM radio. It has everything you need. Manual search, save up to 20 presets, preset switch, and out of scan with store in every found radio station. The only missing feature is the RDS, but that one is not exactly crucial. Sometimes, when the signal is not strong enough, or the station is too cheap to get a decent transmitter, after approximately an hour of listening to one radio station, the sound gets noticeable static. To get rid of it, adjust the frequency manually, or just switch to another preset, and then back to the original station. Let's try out the MP3 player. Insert a USB thumb drive with files. The drive must be FAT32 formatted. The largest thumb drive I own is 4GB, and the device has no problem recognizing it. Plug it in, and the device starts to play the stored files right away. During playback, you may adjust equalizer settings, the best of which seems to be the SRS WOW function. You can also repeat the part of the track, which is useful when studying languages. The display scrolls ID free information like artists and title if it is present. You may also view the file listing. It doesn't support Cyrillic characters, but if you select Chinese language, Russian files are displayed in the file lists, but the tags are in Chinese. Converting to Unicode doesn't help. Sound quality is incredible for such a tiny device. Don't know if it is caused by the so-called wooden cabinet or the SRS valve function, but the sound is very clear. 
In the FM mode, equalizer doesn't work, so there isn't a probability the speakers used. Let's have a look at them. Unscrew four bolts on the back. Remove the cover. You may clearly see that the case is indeed MDF. The upper panel goes inside a little if you are too enthusiastic while plugging in a thumb drive, and from the inside you may see why. This may be easily fixed by gluing little bits of wood to the sides of the panel. Here's the infrared sensor for the remote. And this is the black button I promised to tell about earlier. I installed this power switch parallel to the original, so I don't have to fumble about the backside of the device to turn it on. Here's another interesting thing, a lithium battery. The capacity is enough to get the radio running for about 8 hours, which is great. However, when you charge the battery and it is full, the device doesn't turn off the charging like it should. Instead, it starts to produce knocking sound over your music like this. Your music is interrupted in bits by such cracking. Not a big deal, but that means you can't connect the speakers to your PC and forget. You have to control the device charge to avoid that noise. However, in general, that's a great device with crystal clear sound quality.